Right, in the first video, we're going to create this little tool in which we can easily draw routes from a single vertex. Adjust the width, for example, three lanes, two lanes, and one lane, and merge them together at intersection points. Then it will look something like this. And you can add as many we have different objects like roundabouts, four lanes, five lanes, six lanes, and so on, uh, as you're liking, uh, to your liking to it. And it's pretty simple and intuitive to use. Extrude the points. I wanted to connect here. Just need to find a place where it can connect. Like these two, if you want a different width, we simply select them and change the vertex group. So I will move two lane at maybe three and it's wider. Okay, so let's get started with the benefits. So first of all, it's convenient. You will only need the vertices here. You do not need uh, profiles, you do not need different uh, what's it called different curves with uh, yeah an array modifier and so on. You can simply control the lane width. So if you have default lane width of three measures you make Three meters, then you need obvious to adjust all the points so they are connecting again. <laughs> you can also have a look about subdivision levels, it's a bit easier to find places to connect. Do -do -do. on thank you we can subdivide it in here to get our end mesh and the segment segment link which i usually keep it as seven meters but i just added it here so you can play around with the size and yes it looks terrible if you change this to an unrealistic number because you need to connect them. So for example, if the segment segment length is too high, you won't be able to connect the vertex from here to there and on the other side. That's why I usually set it to around seven meters because then I can simply make it work with the most in my most use cases, let's say it like this. Yeah, so let's get started. All right, so let's start with a blank canvas. I will add a plane with Shift plus A. Go into edit mode, merge at center, so we have a single vertex in here. We go into top view with numpad seven or view viewport top. You can rebind this with uh, a shortcut if you have uh, if you're on a laptop and do not have a numpad. And then we can simply uh, let's draw this a bit. Let's just draw something like this so we have something to work with and see it. So I will pull this uh, up the timeline and change this from timeline to a geometry node editor and simply click on new. Now what we see is we have a uh, group input and group output. Nothing more and we're going to create our system in here. But don't worry, it's actually not that difficult. You will see it's quite easy. 
First day we change the name to road generation or whatever you want to call this tool. And then we have our plane, which is our single vertex points. And the first thing I want to do is to smooth them out. Which means I will subdivide this, but not with a modifier. I will do all of these things in here. So make this big, press Shift plus A. Can I? No, I cannot. So Shift plus A, the uh, same controls as in the normal viewport. You can either search, or if you just know the general knowledge of what you want, where you want, you can also search it. In that case, mesh probably operations because you want to do something with the mesh and then there's subdivision surface. And then you get this box and you connect it with the geometry. So let's make it something like this so you can still see both views. And if I change the view uh, the level, you can see our curve gets smooth. You can probably keep this at 3, maybe 4. We do not need to worry about the density. Obviously, if we go way too high, you need a powerful computer. But just to get a smooth curve for probably more than enough. We can also take the level input and put it to the group input. Now you see level appears here and also on the right side. We click on the right side, default set to four, minimum, maximum, probably fine with zero and six. And then I want to rename this. Simply double click on level and call this sub D levels. So we can change this in here now. Because in the end, we will not use this window anymore. We just use the geometry node setup in the modifier stack. Right, now this is a smooth line, but it's currently a mesh. And we will need a curve to apply a profile in the end. So we need to convert this mesh to a curve. And that's exactly what we need to search. So mesh to curve. Probably, again, we want something to do with the mesh. Operations, mesh to curve. Also search it, mesh to curve. Click it and drag and drop it. Now this is theoretically a curve. It doesn't change anything in, the, in that case, but we need it to generate the road. Um, then the default settings for the road would be to set the twist method, which is the next thing we add here. So now we are at a curve because mesh to curve. The output is a curve now. Curve and let's see. We want to set something, which means we write something to the curve. And that's the curve normal is the twist method. Something you need to know and test. If, you, if you're new, you can either read it in the Blender uh, manual or just drag and drop and see what comes out of it. And here, see up, so we have a flat road. So it doesn't bend in weird ways around um, elevation changes or curves. And now we want to resample the curve which means each point has the same distance later on. So again, curve. We do not want to read something. We do not want to sample the curve, we want to resample the curve, which means probably here at operations, resample curve. 
And now you can see we have points because the count is to 10, which is not the method we want. Evaluated would be density wise. We want length in here. And I will put this at seven meters. Why seven meters? Um, I mostly do lanes that are 3.5 meters around that part. So only this is the same as the width of the length, the same as the width of the road, sorry. And I will also connect this one in here and call this length segments. All right, now we generate the actual road, the surface. So we want our curve to be a mesh again. So we shift A, go to curve, the operations, curve to mesh. So what we did here, we smoothed it. Converted it to a curve, make the twist method so it's a flat surface with the profile, and we resample it. And we can change the, the smoothness in here, which we all, which I usually keep high because it's just it just smooths our curves out. And we can change the segment length to whatever we like we can play later all we want. Now we need a profile. So we need to add a curve in here. If you do not know how to use uh, profiles, um, it's the same principle that we're going to use here. You have a simple profile, which is like the top view, side view depending on what axis you use. And you just apply this on top of your curve, which we also use, not in a geometry node setup, but we could actually do this in a geometry, geometry node setup. Let's see, we might do this. Um, yeah, for curb stones, uh, pedestrian walkways and what else we can find. So we do need a new curve in here. And this time we need a pr uh, primitive. So let's see what, what's in there. There's an arc, a bezier segment, a circle, a line. We don't even need to look at the other things because a line is perfect. A poly spline line with two points. That's perfect for our road. So if we control shift and extrude these, we can see here our line is created. And to get the width of our road, well, I can simply connect this to our profile and we can see if I pull the X, it goes to one direction and X, um, the end point minus, obviously, otherwise we go to the same direction. We have our curve with our road profile. So we do not want to type in numbers in here. We just want uh, an input of the lane width. So our single lane width. And so we need a few things. We need a combine XYZ because this one is a vector. We can connect this one and also duplicate this to the next one, which basically does the same thing as before. One point should be positive at the end and the other one negative. And we only want the X axis, so Y and Z is zero. So 
I want to control this with our single input in here. So I will add a math node. Because now we do some math. Push this down here. So it looks a bit smoother. Since we have two sides, start and end, we need to divide our input. So if we take our input, change it from value to lane width, and put in default value of 3.5 meters. Let's put it in. So in comes here 3.5. And I want to divide this by two. Need to change the method to divide then. So the output here, if we connect it and hover over it, it's 1.75, which is half of 3.5. And for this point, it's perfect. The other one needs to be negated. So we can simply multiply it, uh, duplicate the math node. Click on multiply, connect the output from the divide to the top socket and the bottom one uh, multiply by minus one. Now if we connect this to the X socket, perfect. And if we change the lane width, so for, for example, you have a width of one meters, which is ridic ridiculously small. It still works. Fuck you. Uh, uh, let's go back to the standard. And this is our road. So we can draw it. Perfect. Still not really smooth in some points because of the 7 meter segment length. But that's alright. Because we're going to subdivide it afterwards. Now, we will need these this setup again. And that's quite simple because uh, of different lane sizes. We can also make this the one lane. So we take the selection and make this one output. But Okay, wait, that make, doesn't make really sense. Let's group them together first because we need all of them again for all the other lane sizes. So let's select all of them, press Control plus G. Now we can also select this selection socket from mesh to curve and also put this into the input and selection is completely fine. Yeah, some naming. Now, if we go out of here, we can see we have a simple, cleaner look. And we call this road gen because this one generates our road. And in the end, we can add a subdivision a surface modifier. And this one will create the smoothness we need. And I actually want to change the name of this sub D level. Actually, I think uh, curve. I don't think we need this. Let's disconnect this. Let's disconnect this as well. Disconnect this and just keep this hard at four. Hot coded in. Because we can connect the subdivision level outside of this. Uh, with tab, you go in and outside of your node group or your group. Yeah, node group. So from this subdivision level, we can connect this one to down here and call this sub D level. Sub D level. 
default, I would set it at two because this, this is what I usually export. Well, I don't even export it, but that case will be later. Now we have the selection here. Let's add our lane width. So this one is 3.5 meters, so it's a single lane. What if you want to have a double lane? It's quite simple. We just duplicate the road gen, connect the same sockets, so geometry to the mesh. Uh, this one we can also delete the sub D level curves. Not needed in anymore. Segment length. And the value should not be value. Let's rename this really quick. This one is lane width. Let's connect the lane width. Perfect. But here something should be changed. We need to multiply this. So we add a math node again. Quite simple. Now this one is two lanes, so we multiply this by two. And if we connect this one, you can see on the top, it got double as big or as wide. Now to the selection, because we need to tell them where to use which point. On the right side, go to the uh, data and add. Let's start with three vertex groups. Let's call the first one one lane, the second one two lane, and the third one three lane, because that's all we're going to cover right now. And now go into edit mode. And I uh, usually use the edges, not the vertex points. Just a bit more convenient for me. And select the first one, hold control. Let's select until here. I will select this one as the two lane. And the other ones at one lane. Unhide them again. Now we need the selection, which is actually quite simple. We just need, uh, need the name attribute so we can tell them which one to use. And actually just called named attributes. Put this, uh, put this down a bit more. And we take the attribute and make this to the selection. Connect it. Change the data type to integer. Just works a little bit smoother for me. You can experiment if you like any of the other methods more. And under name, just click on it. And you can see we have one, two, three lane and other things we do not need. So I'm currently in the two lane thing. I select this and I can duplicate this one. Bring this up a little bit. And also connect this one with them. The top one and change it to one lane. And now we need to join these two together. Again, the right naming. We want to join two meshes, so we can either go to mesh operations, maybe. No. Hmm. But then again, it's not a mesh, it's geometry. Here's a join geometry. Or simply, we want to join something, type in join. Oh, there's only one thing. Let's test it out. I can connect one, I can connect two. And if I now connect the geometry socket with the mesh socket. It did work, but there's something weird going on. They are overlapping here. 
And that's because I didn't change this to integer. Perfect. That's why I use integer. So it's hard coded at at this socket and do not uh, inter intersect. Intersect, cross over. Now we need to connect them because currently they're not merging together and yeah, doesn't work. Also, if we up the subdivision, the ends are round, which is also something we do not want. So simply change from all to keep corners and your edges are hard corners. So now we are going to build something to merge these two yeah, road segments, which is basically we would press M and merge by distance. So let's do the same thing. Search for merge. Merge by distance. Perfect. Now if we simply add this one and change this to higher number, which is always no, uh, lower than our lane, uh, our smallest lane width, so we can actually calculate it. Um, yeah, theoretically, this would be fine, but if we have the free lane, let's actually create this one as well to show the issue with hard coding it in, which is quite simple. Change this to free lane, select the mesh, the lane width, oops, I don't know the length, the doo -doo -doo, length text segments, and also lane width with this one. And since it's our three lane, multiply by three. If we join this and Let's make the last part three lane. So disconnect the remove the two lane at three lane. It does actually work. Well, let's see. Maybe we can even keep it that simple. Let's see. I doubt it, but hey, maybe I just learned something new, which actually did save us a few more notes. And now, probably think, oh god, what else is there to come? To be fair, nothing. You can connect this one. Uh, if you go into wireframe mode, this can uh, take these up the levels down. You can see where to connect them. But here you can see. it kind of works but it doesn't really work that well that's because the segments are too small to connect free road to free road easily so let's go with 10 meters for now so that's a bit smoother and if we add it it keeps all the other parts so the length segments, you always try to keep on a level that's suitable for your need. Uh, so there might be instances where it works with a lower number. So seven meters does actually still work. Does it work? Yeah, it still works, gets a bit smaller right there but with the subdivision it winds a little bit play around with it take cautions and that's basically our uh setup each of these points control our height And in the next part on Friday, we are going to apply this road, apply this road to a real world data with, not sure if we use Blender GIS, uh, 
Blender with them. Let's see which one is easier to set up nowadays because they changed a lot of things. And so far you can play around and you make a really fast tool. You can use this for each project. I'm going to show you how uh, this would work really quick as well. Oops. So let's save this. Mm, I'm going to save this at a folder. I have a folder called assets and I will save this as road gen.blend. I hope this was somewhat usable for you. This one is not connecting, so it looks a bit better. If we want to use this uh, in a new project, so we do not need to need open the same thing again. Let's save this. Save as. I have a folder for assets, so just assets and save it under a name that is usable for you. In my case, I call it Roadgen. I also have car materials in there, which I created for rendering and save it. The next step is to select our road generation. I renamed it to Roadgen. Right click and mark as asset. And then save it. And if we now open a new blind file, uh, by the way, if you want a clean file, just delete everything. You can change your settings as well. Click on file, default save startup file. And then you have this one as your startup. So you do not need to delete the default cube, the camera and the light every time. You go to edit, preferences. Can I full screen this? No. Then there's file paths. Click on it. And under asset libraries, you can click on the plus and add a folder where you want to, where you stored your asset. And then click here, save presets, because if Blender would crash without saving, you would need to do this again. So if we now go to our asset browser, which we can do by going to the block icon, asset browser, on the left, I will select, select assets because that's my asset folder. There's a road chain. If I drag and drop this in, I have the whole curve in here with all the settings. Can delete everything but one vertex or delete all of them and add a new one. Merge center. And if I add the two lane, it works. So just to prove, demonstrate. Uh, let's connect them here. To connect them, thank you. Why not here? Hello. Ah, yeah. K zero because it was above. Uh, yeah, this works seamlessly. Same thing if you want this smaller. Also add a loop cut more probably in here. Make this one this two lane so it widens in here or just like this and for example if a highway would start there we can simply create three lane in here and it widens yeah same thing as always if it glitches out by scrolling press n view and increase this one 
Oops, do not need to save this. But yeah, oh, this one is not connecting. But again, this one would be our general thing. The lesson on Friday or the next video on Friday will be the physical road for a set of causa. If I did not mention it, uh, we're building this tool specifically for a set of causa. But to be fair, you can use this for every project you want. Hello. Oh. What about me? So oh, beautiful. We might be able to unwrap this procedurally as well, but so far it did not get me a result that I liked because it did stretch on certain parts that are not necessarily good. But I might update this. And if I update you're able to simply download this on Gumroad for one or two dollars. Or you simply can build it with the video yourself. Which will be true for all of the things we create in here. I will show you how to create it. Show you that you can extend it. For example, if you want... Uh, let's go to the geometry editor. You could use the same setup, but instead of uh, instead of this, where we created a curve, we could also create a cycle, for example. So we can, yeah, we might we might make an extra video for this, where I show you what you can do and maybe add a download link for my tool with a few more options with simple roundabouts and stuff like this. But important for now, only add things that are actually the drivable road. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something and this is useful to you. And see you on Friday with the preparation for the physical road and probably also the generation of it.